Does anyone have a story, a, a one minute story they want to share at all about birds? Yeah. Cindy, what's your, what's your one minute story? I watched some golden crown kinglets and I'd never seen this before, but they're, I thought they were ruby crown at first because their top knots were kind of reddish orange. And a person told me that um, they can flash the normal yellowy gold golden crown, you know, that um, I've always seen. Um, but I'd never seen this, but he, they said if they're really agitated, they can flash this um, orange red color. So I'm going to look into that. I don't know. That doesn't quite make sense to me, but I'm going to look into it. I just had never seen that. I took a video of it. I was just so astounded. That's all. <laughs> That's awesome. There. Well, do you want me just to leave that as it is and just let you you dive into it? If Please tell me anything you've noticed. The only thing I'll add to that is, um, well, I guess we can all think about it, right? So what is the color? That I saw? Well, you not, not like, what, like, what, like, what, what, what are the color, what, what is on, like, what are the colors on? On these, these crown feathers that they can. On the feathers, right? So the feathers, yeah. can feathers change color, like in an instant? Yeah, like on a humper, how the little it, the gorget can go from black to bright, shiny, a pink. Right, but that's not, that's actually just the shift in, in light. That's just yeah, how that's it true. Be. it's not that they're changing the color, right? So, right. Um, so think about that. And then also um, what they might have been meaning is that sometimes you don't see any color at the top of both, both, um, both of the- Most of the time. Yeah, you don't see any color. And when they're agitated, that's when you see the color. So when they're yeah. either like agitated in like a positive way, like, hey, baby, there's a, a cute girl there. Or yes. when they're agitated, like there's a competitor, like a male or maybe something that they're upset about, even like our presence, they, they can flash the crown. So that there might have been, but it, it doesn't, I would say, yeah, look into the color piece. But my, my gut feeling on that one is that the color can't change. Like the feather, the feather color is what the feather color is. It's just yeah. sometimes they can actually, the golden crowns can actually have that orangey red. So it can, it can seem kind of tricky because, um, because if it looks a little pinky reddish, you know, then it's like, oh, is that a ruby crown? But yeah. here's the, here's the thing I'll leave you all with is there's actually better features to look at rather than the color of the crown to tell the difference between the ruby and the golden crown. So look for those, and I'm not going to tell you what those are. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, fun. That's a fun talk. Hi. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so good to see you all. We were just geeking out about some uh, some kinglet kinglet conversation. Um, and I'll just say, let's see, Julia. Hello. And I see is it Gabrielle. Hi, hi, Marissa. Hi, Marissa's here. Linda and Kathy. We have one more person coming in. Jacqueline. Okay. Um, so it's it's quite windy where I am today, and so what I'm going to do is um, I'll obviously mute myself when the wind blows as much as I can, but if it gets to the point where even when I'm talking, because sometimes Zoom will mute out the background noise, if you can't hear me when I'm talking, let me know, because I also brought my headset so I can talk into like a little microphone if I need to. So just let me know if, if it's troubling or, or, or challenging to hear me, because I'll plug that in, just it takes a second to plug it in, so. Um, but good morning. It's really good to see all of your faces this morning. Some of you bundled outside and some of you inside. And regardless of where you are, it's just really nice to, to be in your presence today on this morning. And today we're going to be focusing on the word bounty. That's what came to me this morning to, uh, to share with all of you and to kind of take us on that journey. So, um, so here we go. So find a comfy place as you all probably already are and just let yourself settle in. And I want you just to, this morning, in this moment, just just notice, just whatever comes to you, whether it's your own body or something around you, just see what the first thing is that comes to your attention right now. That's great. And just, uh, just notice that. You don't have to make any decisions about it or judgments or thoughts. Just... 
just interesting what our mind gets drawn to, you know, as soon as we try to go into quietness. So now we're going to be a little bit more intentional. And let's actually start today with our eyes closed if you feel like you're in a safe place. So go ahead and just close your eyes and let's take ourselves inward. So right now I'd like you just to take a journey in your own body and first notice your posture. Don't change it just yet, but just notice how are you sitting? Are you maybe slouched a little bit, leaning forward? Are you upright and tall? Just see what your natural posture was when you first sat down. And then if you want to shift it after you've taken stock, you can do that. And now, journeying deeper into our bodies. Just listening, see if you can actually hear your heart beating right now. And as you're stretching to listen for your heartbeat, you might have become aware of your breath. So noticing the rhythm of your breath. And then you can listen for, or feel for, that interplay between your heartbeat and your breath. And just see where those two meet. And then traveling down in your body. Why don't we rest in our gut for a moment? This is a place that all of us spend some time in after we've eaten, before we've eaten. Sometimes it's a place of worry. Sometimes it's a place of joy. It's just, you can even put your, your hand on your belly right now. And just whatever comes to you, just allow it. Just taking some time to connect with that center part of your body. Now from that beautiful, strong place in the center of your body, go ahead and send your energy your awareness down into your legs, all the way down to your knees, your calves, your ankles, into your feet, and then down to the ground beneath you, imagining that you had roots like a big, giant, beautiful tree, sending its roots down into the ground. And you've already found your stability, your trunk, your strong, your strength. So just feeling the roots stretching down into the earth and noticing what's around you down there. What are you feeling, what are you experiencing? Do you have an awareness of your trunk and your branches up above the earth right now? And even that place where the earth meets the trunk and the roots. Now you can just imagine that you feel the little feet, the small little nails of a bird walking, scratching the leaf litter right above where your trunk meets the earth. Imagine that bird might want to create a nest somewhere, you know, for some of you once the snow is gone. So just imagining that it's time for nesting and that bird is going to nest right next to your trunk. And some of you might actually have 
a bird nesting within your trunk or on your branches. So just see where, where it is that if your imaginary bird friend might come along, where do you think they would nest right now next to you or on you? while our eyes are still closed, listening for the sounds. What are the sounds that bird would hear from that position? Whether it's high up in the branches of your trunk and your tree, or lower close to the ground. What kind of sounds exist around that nest? Now you can let that bird just do its thing and you're gonna bring your awareness back to your own body, your own trunk and branches and roots. And then gently, you're gonna open your eyes and just let yourself gaze in front of you, softly, gently. Noticing the subtle motions. You can send your sight off into the distance and just let yourself find a point to focus on, something as far away as you can possibly see. And once you've found your point, keep your eyes kind of locked and focused on that and then let the periphery of your vision expand in all directions. So stretching out on all sides, up and down. Really try to stretch your vision, expanding it all around you. Remembering the sky above. That's great. And so now, I'd like you to bring your sense of hearing in with the sight. So keep your eyes in owl eyes. That's what we were just doing. So in that nice gentle vision, that softened vision, keep your eyes in owl eyes. And at the same time, start to bring your awareness to your ears, noticing the sounds that you're hearing all around you. Noticing where the most prominent sounds are. We'll start there. We'll start with the most dominant sound in your landscape. For a lot of people, the most dominant sound can be human-made sounds, which is fine. So if that's the case for you, go ahead and search for the most dominant wild sound that you can hear, non-human sound right now. And if you're inside, if you maybe crack your window a little bit and can listen, and otherwise, if you are inside, just listening for whatever sounds might come. And you can even see if you can stretch your sense of hearing out beyond the walls that you're sitting amongst. Now do your best to listen for one of the quieter sounds, the more subtle sounds. 
And when you get to a subtle sound, see if you can go one layer deeper, something even more quiet, even more subtle. I'm just noticing all the beautiful layers of color, of texture, of the sounds, always all around us. And it's often the subtle ones that we tend to disregard or our mind is picking up and perceiving, but we might not consciously be aware of. So now without too much thought, just let yourself be in this moment. So we'll spend one minute just sitting here noticing without having to do anything, no particular assignment, just to notice what's around us right now. Good work. So we're all living in different environments, some similar to others. Some might seem pretty bleak right now, pretty desolate, pretty cold, wintry, still beautiful, of course. And others might be a little bit more lush, maybe more green, maybe wet. And so regardless, there's birds out there. They're doing their thing. And so today we're gonna focus on that word bounty looking for the bounty around us regardless of what the environment shows us what we think is happening out there because the birds are surviving they're living off of what they find out there so let's start first with the things that we can see so i want you to look around your landscape and just let yourself ask that question you can just start by putting that question out there where is the bounty right now? And just see what you're drawn to, see what kind of what part of the natural world, and maybe not natural world, you're drawn to. Just notice where your mind and where this question takes you on your landscape. So we'll sit here for the next couple minutes with that question in mind.
So I'm quite liking this question, so I think we'll stay with it for another round. And you can either ask the question and take what you were already noticing one level deeper to see where the bounty is with what you were already noticing, or continue to look around, find more, look for more proof of the bounty around you. I guess I'll just say, like, what other forms does a bounty come in? Nice. So now, if you haven't already, you can ask the question from the place of listening. So the bounty of sounds. So listening for what are the, is the bounty of sound on your landscape?
Okay, now you can ask yourself the question of the felt sense of bounty on your landscape. So I have the auditory sense of bounty right now. Um, so just check in and notice what does it feel like, that experience of bounty in your own body and on the land around you. All right, good work, everybody. So take the next couple of moments to offer a blessing or gratitude for those ones that you interacted with today, that sense of bounty on your land. All right, so thank you. As you all know, if you need to head out, you can, you can head out now and thank you so much for coming. And if you wanna stay for our chat, you're welcome to do so as well. And uh, for those who wanna stay, I'd love to hear what came up for you. What was that experience of tapping into bounty on your landscape like today? Or you can just raise your hand or wave your hand if you have something you wanna share. And did I see you? Okay. Yeah, go for it, Gabriel. Gabriel, sorry. Um, I just love this theme of bounty because I've really been struggling with scarcity in my life. I'm about to go to court to see if my alimony is going to get caught. So that's been a big, you know, how can I accept the bounty and not go into the fear of the scarcity? And um, I haven't been able to come to your classes because I usually have a Monday morning class. And um, so I did yesterday, I did the one from January 22nd. And I really worked with my uh, mulberry tree, who is kind of half um, dormant and half still has some leaves on it. But last year, it didn't do very well with the fruit. The fr it, was, it was bounty of fruit, and then it all shriveled up on the vine. So I've been working with that tree. And so today, <clears throat> when we get went to the deeper layer of bounty, I saw the tree full of fruit and um, healthy. So that was really nice. And I actually turned around and looked behind me and I could actually see the mountains I'm in Southern California and I could see the mountains it's a very warm day here and I could still see a little snow on the mountain so 
it, just things I don't really notice anymore. And then I have a, a channel. Um, it's a, a, oh, I forget what it's called. It goes to the ocean. It takes the overflow from the ocean. So I'm like two miles from the ocean. And so when I went deeper, I saw the bounty of the ocean, which I can't see, but I can almost touch because it's here. So at one point, I, I just spent three weeks in India, in Goa, at a retreat. My, my girlfriends, well, my friends all pitched in for me to go for my 75th birthday. So every morning I woke up. I was in this little like bamboo hut and every morning I woke up to this just bountiful music of birds and they were just very different birds from here. And I just realized that I have that bounty here. It's just different, you know, and it was really nice to realize that because I was so felt so blessed when I was in India, but you know what? It's here too. So I really thank you for this. Yay. Oh, that is so beautiful to listen to that whole story, Gabrielle. And thank you so much. I'm really glad you were able to come today and just love how that works out magically for people sometimes, you know, just the right time. And yeah. um, thank you for taking on that us on that journey of your landscape and, and what's all around you and the beautiful bounty that you're a part of, including the ocean. That's, that's so incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, who else's hand did I see? I saw someone else's hand go up, yes? Maybe? Ah, Marisa and then Linda, please. I'm in hell with a hawk. <laughs> I have a Cooper's hawk. It keeps attacking my birds and there's blood everywhere. <laughs> but yesterday I discovered something really interesting. The hawk cannot stand it when I whistle. Pisses him off to no end. I whistle, I whistle. He looks at me. He's like, ah, and he leaves. Now I know. Wow. <laughs> it sounds like there's an abundance of, um, of nourishment for your hawk <laughs> at your yes, house. The pigeons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I know they're beautiful. They have to eat and all that. But it's hard. Not not yeah. my birds, not when I bring them in for their death. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's a hard thing. That can be super well, I'm glad you found a way to um to maybe Annoy him. Shush it away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Annoy maybe him. Somewhere else. Sure. Uh thanks, Marisa. Uh let's see, Linda. You're on deck. Oops. You're muted. Let me do that. We'll ask to unmute. There we go. Okay, you can hear me? Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, I have a bounty of clouds today. I'm like living in a cloud. The fog is so dense. It's hard to even just see beyond the fence, which is probably about oh, maybe 30 feet from me. Um, but it's really beautiful because uh, the uh, aspen trees that are back here are... Um, the little buds are etched, the branches are etched. So there's a bounty of buds that I hadn't noticed before. There was one aspen tree that had started to have buds, which amazed me way back in early December, I noticed on, on one of our sits. Um, but today, as I was looking with everything etched in the bounty of clouds, um, I can see that just about 90% of the trees um, have start of little tiny buds just starting to, I mean, I'm sure they were there before, they're starting to swell just a little bit, which is amazing because we just had all this, I mean, we had temperatures to 38 below zero for a couple of days. It's just been this incredible cold, which we don't ha usually have that much cold and that that um, deep of a cold spell, but um, now it's warmer and it's lighter and it's just amazing. So that was fun for me today. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I think I remember you talking about your Aspen buds, the one of the last <laughs> sessions. And um, mm -hmm. it's really, again, it's really, like fun to follow like along the journey with some of you of, of your landscape and as we move through time together. So that's awesome, Linda. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. Yeah. 
I know um, for me, my <laughs> I was almost like chuckling because the, the first part of the sit for me, I was noticing bounty in, in a variety of ways. One was um, I happened to have this little flock move through and um, and they they basically like they were, I was noticing all the different branches they were landing on and I thought, oh, that's beautiful. Like the bounty of branches, a bounty of pla like great safe places for birds to sit and roost. There's a bounty of that around here. And and then as we started going deeper and deeper and listening to the sounds, <laughs> My the pre, the folks I'm staying with, uh, the gentleman is working on painting a door right now, and he was using the like a spray gun for it, and he started in the middle of our city. He's like, rah, rah. and I was like, oh man, there's a bounty of sound for sure. <laughs> and I just realized like the that um, that that word can mean lots of things, and sometimes the bounty can be wanted, and sometimes it can be unwanted, <laughs> and. Uh, and yeah, and then a moment later, there was this bounty of exhaust fume that came from one of those big like diesel trucks that just like poof out the, the black smoke. And I, again, I was just laughing. I was like, wow, it's really interesting when you when you ask the question, you know, and just sort of what starts to show up. <laughs> there was plenty of other beauty that was around. And right now, oh, I see here is a red shouldered hawk, I think. That's really cool. So all sorts of goodness and, and cool lessons around that word bounty for myself. Anyone else I have, have a, a story to share? Yeah, Marisa, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I posted a, uh, a link to the hawk. I was wondering if you could tell me if it's a Cooper's hawk. I think it is. Oh, cool. I'll take a look at it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious awesome. to know. Because sure, I have to sure. log it for my feeder watch. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'll take a look at it after. That's awesome. Or you can email me too if I forget to do it here on this thing. But yeah, send me an email with that. Yeah, great. Julia, go for it. Okay. Well, I, there's a bounty of sun to, sun today, for which I'm grateful after these weeks of dreariness and you know, cold and wet and all. Uh, but I I still have I can I'm outdoors today and I can still see um, some coneflower seeds. Uh, available there and and uh, there's plenty of leaf litter and all for them to to scratch around in and I have some mature trees that where the bark has lots of little cracks and crevices for them to find find those tiny insects in it and so on and uh, when you uh, ask us to go deeper what came to me was uh, the soil and the bounty of nutrients in the soil. Uh, of course, there are some evergreens here, but but you know all of this life depends on the nourishment from the soil. Well, water and sun too. But but um, you know uh, I've we've worked on this for a for a long time <laughs> to have the soil be uh, uh, rich in nutrients and all those little critters that support the rest of the ecosystem so so i just thought of that yeah i love that you went there i think it's a really um it's easy to forget you know that that really is the the source of so much abundance you know that with good soil everything else can can be fed and nourished there's a beautiful book um i think i may have mentioned it once or twice before here it's called wolf totem has anyone ever heard of that it's an old book one of my teachers martin pectel um uh, turn, turned our class onto it and um, he it's 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 sort of it has like almost like a hippie name it kind of sounds like it or like a woo, -woo name like wolf totem but it's really a beautiful beautiful old story well it's not old but it's it's it talks about like old times in Mongolia and it's really a story of the grass and the grasslands and it's it's really powerful and quite quite moving and beautiful and um, I feel like I, I don't, I look at grass in a much different way now. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a real magic and, and powerful, beautiful book. And it's about wolves too. So that's kind of cool. Wolves and horses in Mongolia. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else want to share their story, their experience? Uh, Jacqueline and then Kathy. Oops, Jackie, I think you are muted still. There we go. 
The sun's so bright, I can't see my screen. That I know. Well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great to have the sun uh, feel the warmth, of course, is a great bounty. And um, uh, when I was doing the sound thing, awareness, it was interesting because for a while it was kind of noisy. And then it was quiet. I mean, there still were sounds, but it was, but I was thinking, oh, the bounty of no sound. Um, and it was, was cool to think of it that way. And, um, and then a dog barked. And I, a while ago, I, there've been some, a lot of barking dogs that can get irritating, you know, and I was sitting here and my my back deck and um a flicker landed on the gutter and it just sort of shocked me and woke me up and I thought of uh, how the the flickers are the wake-up birds you know that that's one of their nicknames and I remember them hammering on my chimney and stuff like that and I thought oh the dog is the wake-up dog because I realized the irritation I had about it um, was that it was distracting me from my thoughts and I thought I thought <laughs> I, I was getting lost in my thoughts instead of being present to all the bounty around me and you know just going into mundane or unpleasant thoughts and so now it has really transformed my experience of dogs barking to think of them as a wake up of course if it just goes on and on for <laughs> it's not pleasant but it's just so nice to think that when we really go deeper into things like we do here you know, there's so many ways we can transform our reactions to things and be more aware. So Absolutely. thank you so much for all that you do. And a lot of times I can't come, but I watch and I watched the one last week, too, about the tree or about the. Um, what's it? Yeah. And there's this sort of. There's a lot of elm trees here. I'm in Santa Fe on an arroyo, and they're kind of ratty looking trees. You know, they just aren't as pretty as some trees could be. And I, I appreciate that tree because birds perch in it, you know, and um, so that's mainly the way I've looked at it. And then as I kept looking at it, the shapes of the branches, it, and it, it's, looked like the this huge face of a barn owl and so now i just with hair though at the top <laughs> so now i have a much more uh interesting relationship with that tree <laughs> so thanks for that too oh you're welcome i i love that that um yeah thank you for sharing the tree story as well and uh and the bounty that that lives on your land you know and it's really awesome to hear for me it's like i have my own experience on my land but to hear all of you sharing your experience with bounty it also reminds me of the things i might have forgotten you know like one of you mentioned the sun and it's like of course i've got the sun on me right now and sometimes it's easy to forget those things that are like the most bountiful you know and the most like feel most gratitude for and um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for that, Jackie. I really appreciate that. Kathy, I know you said you, you raised your hand. You wanted to share. Oh, sure. Am I on here? I was, yeah. I got caught up in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Initially, I was just thinking I had a bounty of urban sounds and a, a bounty of work to do in the spring looking around my yard. Um, but then coming to a better piece with it, um, I started noticing little birds, not that I have a bounty of them, but the uh, dark-eyed juncos are here now, which is such a delight. They're so lovely and nuthatches. But what we really have a bounty, I'm in Greeley, Colorado, is the geese. 
Oh, oh, I don't know. Am I here? <laughs> Let me yep, yep, that. you are. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think, yeah. oh, um, there's just um, a, a bounty of geese. It's so wonderful. I went by a lake yesterday and from the one end to the other, there were geese. So I just love hearing them in the sky, watching their formations. And this is such a special time here. So yeah, a bounty of geese is what's bringing me joy. And I will take this with me all week. I always appreciate what you, as I'm sure we all do, what you all offer. And I, yeah, I'll be thinking about it all week long. So thank you. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that you bring up the, you know, two of the birds that I think of in a lot of parts of the U.S. as winter birds, you know, with the geese mm -hmm. and the, the juncos. And and um, it is so sweet to remember that in the wintertime that we get to connect with, with those ones that we might not see the rest of the year, you know, especially the juncos and a few of the other winter species that come around. And what a beautiful thing to, to remember them, even though it you know, we often focus on the springtime and the bird songs in the springtime and it's so exciting then, you know, but it's really cool to see the, the birds that come to us, you know, for warmth. Like we, they think of this as warm or a sort of a, a more hospitable environment than where they were and uh, and what they must think of, of our environment, you know, that it's like it's bountiful for them more com compared to where they were, you know. So, yeah, thank you for that, Kathy. That's a, a good reminder of those ones. Really appreciate that. Well, thanks everybody. What a beautiful journey. And Jackie, one other thing I wanted to say to you, I meant uh, I forgot um, about this piece is just the, um, when you were talking about transforming those relationships with sound, usually it's often sounds, you know, but transforming those and how interesting that I think, it doesn't always happen, of course, but sometimes when we transform our relationship with a sound, but suddenly that sound just either goes away or we don't really hear it in the same way anymore. And it just, it, it can all transform, you know, and, and what a what a teacher, what a gift in that way. So thank you for that reminder. Yeah. All right, everybody. Anyone else want to share before? Yeah, go ahead, Marisa. Are you waving goodbye? No, you want to say one more thing? Okay, go for it. No, no, I'm waving goodbye. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's so nice to see everybody. Everyone, yeah, and we'll uh, we'll see you next week. And I'm uh, like what Kathy said, carry this with you throughout the week. Just continue to ask yourself where the bounty is, wherever you are. So, all right, many blessings, everybody. Stay warm. Stay warm. Yeah, enjoy.